There's a place in Africa where you can walk with lions. Where you can be part of the pride. And these volunteers have a chance to do just that. They've come from all over the world to work in this unique conservation program. To see more lions hunting free in the wilds of Africa. And to engage with them like no one else on Earth. There's never a dull moment at Antelope Park. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Coming up in this thrilling episode. Volunteers witness an exciting chase by the lions. Do they succeed? There is a new member to Antelope Park. Leanne needs to dart another lioness for moving. Something interesting catches the Ngamo pride's attention. The gentle giants of the park overwhelm one individual. Dan and Leanne are venturing on a day encounter with some of the volunteers who are experiencing it for the first time. Leanne briefs the group before the excursion. Right, so this morning we're going to be taking out uh, these three lions for a day encounter, two females and one male. Dala and Dingani that are siblings, and then we've got Rusizi um, that'll be joining them today. Now, these guys have been on day encounters before. Um, the reason why we do these day encounters is basically not to train them as such, but for them to get used to being out with a the vehicle. They're used to walking with us, um, but when it comes to them following a the vehicle, it's a different story. So we do these day encounters during the day, so we can watch and see how they do. And if they start following the vehicle well, they move on to the next stage, which is the night encounter stage. Now, this uh, day encounter with these guys will be their last one. Next week, we'll start doing night encounters with them because um, we're happy with them. They're following the vehicle well. They're sticking with the group. Um, they're hunting by themselves when we take them off a day encounter. So that's what we want them to do. Okay. Basically, the only reason why we take the vehicle with us is because it's unsafe for us to be on the ground with these guys because they are quite big now. So the reason why we take the vehicle, it's, it's pretty much the same thing as a line walk. They're obviously following the group, which is us. It's just a different, it's, they're following the vehicle basically. <laughs> The lions are lively and eager to head into the bush. Their playful behavior is a sign of their enthusiasm for the encounter. They're, uh, they've been playing a little bit and um, we've got two that are used to being together and a third that is uh, being introduced to walking with those two today. And uh, yeah, it's very exciting, really, really cool. Okay, so so far these lines are doing really well. Um, Rusizi is following nicely. I was a bit worried that she was gonna go back to get her brother, but uh, she's doing really well. She seems to like Dingani quite a lot. They're very playful. Um, we haven't cr come across any game yet, um, but they have been picking up on scent and everything. We're just gonna let them go. We'll try and keep them in the front of us um, so they can pick up scent and hopefully if we come across any game, they'll be the first ones to see it. Um, but so far, it's, it's going really well. I think, uh, we've seen some food at this day, so we're gonna head there and see if these guys, if these lions are going to see the whole at this day. Their attention has been caught and intent is clear. They flank off from one another, and hopefully the wildebeest will fall for their strategy. The lions have been spotted, but this doesn't seem to deter them from their mission. They continue to chase the herd. Who will tire out first?
The wildebeest have the upper hand due to the short grass and manage to make their escape. Oh, they're gone, babies. Come on. One hunt failed, but another quickly underway. The lions are determined to make a kill today. The launch is initiated far too early, and the Impala make a brisk getaway. Okay, so we finished with the day encounter now. The lions are back in the, in the enclosure. Um, they did really, really well. Um, we had a last impala chase just before we got to the enclosure. Um, Rosizi did very well. Um, so I think she's going to be quite a good leader in this group. Um, so we'll see. Now we'll start uh, separating, putting into pairs and doing a night encounters. And we'll see how they do from there. Today, the horse volunteers are training for polo cross. Part of the horse rehabilitation program is to get the horses fit and healthy, and polo cross is the perfect exercise to achieve this. We play polo cross almost every, every Saturday, and as often as we can in between to train them, especially now when it's a polo cross season. And yeah, you can really tell that the horses like them, not all of the horses, but the ones that are trained, they get really excited when they, like, we take the rackets and the ball and we go out to the polo field and yeah, you can feel the whole horses are excited. Antelope Park has a new member, not quite as large as the rest of the animals. So he was found abandoned uh, by his family and taken in uh, by Colin and Leanne. Um, and then a few days later, um, his family came because he was squeaking like this, and they came and took him back. His mother ran up and grabbed him and carried him away. Then he was gone for a day and almost two, and then he came running back because he's a little soft boy. He's getting there, he's getting his exercise and taking him out hunting several times a day and he's starting to kill his own little food now. Very good. Yeah. The volunteers have named the mongoose Moyo, meaning heart. Mongooses prey on insects such as termites and normally live in large family structures. A youngster like this would have been kicked out of a family if the mother thought he was too weak. Despite being so young, he is still able to attack and kill his own food. Even if it is just grasshoppers for now. We leave the mongoose to its hunting and join up with some volunteers on their way to an exciting mission where all the help is needed. Darting lions can be a dangerous task. It's like, it's like something you see on television and now I'm a part of it, so I'm excited. Right, hi guys. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Leanne. I'm the lions manager here at Antelope Park. Now today we're going to be darting four lionesses. Um, now the reason why we're darting them 
The two females that we're doing first in here um, are in a group of four. Um, the other two females are picking on them quite badly. And the same with the other group inside the BPG. We've got two females that are bullying the other ones quite badly as well. So we're going to bring those two females across here and put them with these guys and take those ones and put them with there. They obviously got the same sort of character, bigger build, obviously a lot more aggressive. So we'll put the aggressive ones in here and the timid ones will go with the other females that are quite timid as well. If we are working with the lions and you do hear me say get out, okay, just don't hesitate, just go, okay, because sometimes they can wake up. We have had cases before, especially if they're down for a long period of time, um, they can wake up unexpectedly. Yeah, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> yeah, me too. My pulse is going yeah. like this now. Like before, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, like it's very serious. So. Of course, it's serious. Yeah. I'm scared of making a mistake. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm afraid of. Pieces of meat attract the lions to draw closer to the fence. Uh, we're going to be doing Mondi first because she's the skittish one in this group. Um, so we always do the skittish ones first because if we do the other one she's going to see what we're doing and then we're not going to get a chance to do it. Okay, Mondi's in. I'm just feeling in uh, the time of the injection when she starts to become affected by it and then when she's out. <laughs> Yep, it's in. Two, three, four, five, six, so only four minutes after she's slightly becoming a little unsteady on her feet. It's very interesting. I've not done it before, so. Uh, Mondi's starting to show signs now. Um, I was expecting her to. Obviously, we dotted her first as well, but she's a lot smaller built as well, so um, she'll go down first and then Katanga hopefully a couple of minutes after that. Now, when we check to see if they're down fully, we just give them a tickle on the inside of their ear. Um, and if their ear doesn't move or their head doesn't move, it's usually a sign that they, they're fully out and we can start working with them. Mm -hmm. No, she's not out yet. Um, her mouth is still moving a little bit when I tickle her ear. So we'll just give her a few more minutes. Finally, she is out. And the team moves in quickly and swiftly to weigh, measure and remove her from the enclosure. We weigh the lines every time we dart them. Just obviously when we need to deworm them and stuff, we deworm them according to their weight. So it just gives us a good um, estimate. Obviously when we dart them as well, we, we dart them per weight. So instead of estimating or underestimating, we've got their exact weight. So it does help us a lot. The lionesses are loaded into the truck ready to be located to a different enclosure. Their body temperature needs to be monitored and their breathing rates checked to make sure each lion is safely under sedation. Um, the boys next door here are really excited to see new girls. Um, obviously because they've come from a different part of breeding program, these guys haven't seen them. So as you can see, they're all pretty excited. Now mondi has got a, um, a claw mark on the back right by her tail. Um, it's quite bad and she's got a bit of infection. Whoops bit of infection on around the, the claw mark so we're just going to give her some penicillin just to clear it up we're going to spray a whole lot of wound spray inside there to help heal it as well okay we're going to give the two females a reversal now because um, we've done all we need to do now they're, they're, in, they're in the new enclosure we wanted um, so we're going to give them the reversal and then um, wait for them to wake up 
Okay, the reversals are in, guys. If you could just mark that down. Well, the reversal drugs were given about six minutes ago, and uh, Katanga now is showing fairly good signs that she's awake. She's almost on her feet now. It's like someone waking from a hangover. <laughs> yeah. A really bad yeah. one when you wake up somewhere else than you started. All in all, a successful relocation task. And the volunteers are relieved with the outcome and grateful for the experience. Over at the Ngamo site, Yvonne, the lion researcher, is undertaking an interesting experiment with the pride. She will play the sound of hyena calling into the release site to observe how the lions react. Having never heard hyena before, Yvonne is hoping the pride will show natural interest. As the hyena call is played, the pride instantly react and all 12 lions are immediately curious. When released into stage three, hyena will be another competitive species, something these lions have yet to experience. It's good to see how intrigued the pride are by the hyena, as it demonstrates their natural territorial instincts. Milo and the rest of the pride quickly approach the fence where the sound is coming from. Even the cubs are showing intrigue. This experiment will allow the researchers to assess whether or not the cubs would be able to defend themselves in the wild if hyenas were about. Judging by this reaction, it's clear their natural instincts are engaged. In the wild, hyena are known as lion's arch enemies, constantly attempting to steal meat from lion's fresh kills. Lions either have to defend themselves from the scavengers or, if outnumbered, give up their meal. Over at the breeding enclosures, some of the volunteers are getting their hands dirty with enclosure cleaning. Not the most appealing task, but it's all in the name of conservation. I'm scooping poop for the lions, and I guess it's our fault that we have to scoop the poop because we're the ones that help to feed them too. So we give them the meat. We can only expect that they're going to need to poop it out. There's a few piles along here because there's so much of it. And it's all furry from the animals not being able to digest the fur. You see more? I think it's a little bit of old intestine, pretty sure. They're a little scary, but at least they're behind bars. Although it's a little sad, because they should be free. It's a necessary job in order to keep the captive lions in a healthy environment, and volunteers play an important part in this role. Oh. Moving over to the elephants, where a new volunteer is herding them for the first time. It's a humbling experience, and Alex can't get over the enormity of these giants. Hi. I'm Alex, I'm 27 and I'm from New York. Um, I came to Antelope Park to work with all of the beautiful animals and to come back to Africa. I'd been here four years ago and kind of connected with the people and with the animals. And I like the idea of doing um, volunteer tourism. So I kind of get to travel, you know, expand my own horizons, but also give back to the place I'm traveling to. Hi, do we have treats for them? Do we have treats? Leaves? There you go. So it's kind of one thing to like watch 
these animals on TV or to see them at zoos, but to kind of be standing right next to it and to realize my head is like the size of one of its legs and I'm not even like the width. It's enormous and majestic and gentle despite its size. Such like intricate little details like seeing its eyelashes up close or is pretty amazing. Um, it's really an absolutely amazing experience to be up close with the animals, to be able to work with them and pet them and you know, today we're herding them someday. Oh, and I have another one coming to play with me. To be able to give them treats, you know, today I've been feeding out of my hands and uh, taking me for a ride. Hi, what can I give you? What, this one? You want some too? I mean, what's cooler than this, right? Ah. She's coming to say hi. I know. I know. I want to get her some treats. You know, I learned today that, you know, they don't have any natural predators. You know, outside of a few lions, you know, seven or eight lions would be able to bring them down. But other than the elephants, their only greatest predator is, is us, uh, which I don't know how anybody could hunt and hurt, you know, these beautiful creatures. We're going to push them. You know, their numbers are dwindling and it's us that's doing it, you know, just for a tusk or a trophy on a wall. And just, does that seem worth it to you? Let's see, these ones? Oh, you just keep feeding me things to feed them. Come here. Where else can you stand, like, in the middle of, like, reeds that are higher than your head, all these wide open spaces, clouds, giant elephant walking right next to me. The elephants are out in Bormas at night, where a guard watches over them in order to protect them from poachers. Good night, little guys. Oh, my God. Oh, look at that. And they all went right in when they saw the branches coming. They're all patiently waiting for their food. There you go. So until tomorrow, I hope they enjoy their dinner. Have a good night's sleep so we can play tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. Yeah. Now, <laughs> yeah. now it's time for our dinner. That was good, right? That was yeah. the best thing we did so yeah. far. Coming up in the next engaging episode, a photographic volunteer witnesses something incredible. Meat prep is underway and there is scrapping over the lion's share. Leanne builds a den in preparation for some new arrivals. The tables are turned when a zebra stallion attacks Ravubu. This is a real cat fight. And the cubs discover something new.